Good day everyone, I am Joseph of Digilitic Solutions. I am a consultant, trainer, speaker, and a book author. Welcome to our course, Deep Learning Mathematics. In this lesson, we will learn about historical trend in focus. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to identify historical trends in deep learning, know the development of deep learning models, and appreciate the role of deep learning in today's world. The better appreciation of deep learning can be taken in the context of its history. Its history is very colorful since its name has been changed many times depending on the proposed philosophical viewpoints. Just like any trends in history, the popularity of philosophical perspective waxed and waned. But one thing for sure, its applications and accuracy have strengthened over time. Of course, we are not going to talk about the intricate details of its history, but we are going to trace the striking breakthroughs that have paved the way to solving world problems in health, economics, science, engineering, politics, and many more. If you think deep learning as very new, then you are mistaken. It dates as far as 1940s. It appears as new because it has been so unpopular for so many decades. And not only that, this name, as it is new known today, has gone through a lot of rebranding just like any other products. This can be attributed to the fact that a lot of researchers influenced it and that their respective perspectives have shaped the evolution of the concept. It was known as cybernetics from 1940s to 1960s. It was known as connectionism in the 1980s to 1990s. The present name Deep Learning was coined in the earlier part of 2006. As you can see, the first wave started in 1940s with the progress of theories of biological learning and the implementations of the first models, like perceptron. This allowed the training of a single neuron. In a period covering 1980 to 1995, the second wave started. This highlighted the connectionism approach. With it, backpropagation became famous by training a neural network with one or two hidden layers. This, this is really a great progress of the first wave. At the beginning of 2006, the present and third wave started to revolutionize the theory and the technology. It is very interesting to note that the earliest learning algorithms were meant to be computational models of biological learning. It means that the pattern was inspired by how learning is processed by the brain so because of this name, Artificial Neural Network, or ANN, was birthed for deep learning. This kind of engineering system was inspired by a biological brain, be it a human brain or animal brain. Maybe you would like to ask, because it is inspired or inspired by a biological brain, does it mean that the function was real? The answer is no not even halfway close to reality. The reason for this is that the models through used or though used to understand brain function were not designed to be realistic models of biological function. To understand this, let's have the two main ideas on neural perspectives on deep learning. The first idea is learning by example. It means that we can learn from a brain through a proof of examples that it illustrates. According to this idea, the way to building intelligence is to reverse the computational principles behind brain processes. The second idea explains that the mechanism that powers the brain as a system and principles of human intelligence as a whole should be understood. With this idea is an enlightening gateway to answering the fundamental scientific questions 
and their capability to solve engineering applications. So then maybe you would like to proceed be asking again, is deep learning limited to the idea of neuroscientific perspective? Well, the answer is no. The beauty of deep learning terms multiple strata of compositions which are not necessarily inspired by neural networks. I am sure you are familiar with linear models. This kind of model is the earliest precursor to modern day deep learning. This is motivated by a neuroscientific perspective. This first wave of neural research was known as cybernetics. In the 1950s, the perceptron became the first model to learn weights by defining categories given the examples of inputs from each category. This paved way to add a line or adaptive linear element that would predict the value of an outcome from data. This modern stochastic gradient descent adapts the weights of Adeline, but with some modifications. Today, neuroscience, though has greatly ushered the development of deep learning, is no longer a predominant guide. This reason is, or the reason is, the fact that the human brain is very complex that still makes it a mystery even up to this time of modern technology. With this, our understanding of our own brain is still not enough to make it as a guide. To be able to do so is to monitor and understand the activities of thousands of interconnected neurons simultaneously. This number is still at the very least. As mentioned, the second wave of neural networks took place in 1980. This is called connectionism, which is also called as parallel distributed processing. This stems from the context of cognitive science, which is an interdisciplinary approach to understand the mind by combining the levels of analysis. The central idea behind connectionism is that a large number of computational units can achieve intelligent behavior when networked together, meaning single units should be combined to form complex layers that can cater complex functions that can in turn solve more complex problems. One of the key concepts of connectionism is distributed representation, which says that one input to a system is represented by many features. Each feature should be involved in the representation of many inputs or possible inputs. Another breakthrough of connectionism was the successful application of backpropagation to train deep neural networks. The third wave of neural networks reached its unprecedented success in 2006 when Geoffrey Hinton showed that a deep belief could be efficiently trained using a strategy called greedy layer-wise pre-training. This shifted the process or the focus to unsupervised learning techniques. This has the ability to generalize well from small data sets. However, today deep learning models can leverage on large labeled data sets. Deep learning has come from a not so distant past. Its use and application have been proven to be potent in solving our basic problems. And you can be a part of it too. Why are we studying this? Why should we not just let go of it? We are deeply connected to our past and the best way to innovate and succeed is to look back and identify the things that we should improve. This is not just a journey of a single person but of humanity as a whole. So after being all said and done, let's try to evaluate ourselves. What are the waves of deep learning? What is the present day status of deep learning? Is deep learning a perfect example of human brain? Why? Why not? Write your answers in the comment below and then we will discuss. 
Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Please click the bell icon to be notified every time we have a new session. See you in the next lesson.